Hi guys, it's been a while, but in this video I teach you how to make this sweater. The sweater is very easy to make and to adjust to your size. The pattern is in US terms. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to, then hit the red subscribe button and the bell button next to it. So you'll be the first to know when I upload a new video. If you have any questions or an idea for a new tutorial, let me know in the comments below. For this tutorial, I use Ishawn's Baby Antibacterial. It is a 100%, 100% antibacterial Draylon. 100 grams is 280 meters. The recommended needle is a three and a half or a four millimeter, and it is a number two weight yarn. The color I use is the color khaki, but I also have this one in hunter green. It's the same yarn and also a beautiful color. But for this sweater, I use the khaki. I also use a 5mm crochet hook. Let's begin. We start with some measurements. We only need two measurements to make this sweater. Decide the length of your sweater. And keep in mind that you get 2 inch extra at the bottom for the ribbing. So I like my sweater to start at my hip. I think the top of my hip, that's a nice point. Then measure from the top of your hip or where you want your sweater to fall minus two inch. Measure from that point up to your shoulder, over your shoulder to the back, all the way back to the same point. So this measurement is number one. So write that down at number one. The next measurement is around the widest part of your upper body. So for the most people that will be the breast area. So measure around the widest part of your body, of your upper body. Divide that number by, by four and write that number down at number two. And with these two measurements, we can make our sweater. So let's begin. So we need to make a chain for the length you wrote down at number one. So for me that was 108 centimeters. So make a slip knot, slide in your hook and chain the amount of stitches you need to get the length you wrote down at number one. I make a little swatch to show you the stitch pattern and then explain you how to work up the first piece of your sweater. So loosely chain the amount of Change you need. To get the length you wrote down at number one. So my length is a lot shorter. Shorter because that is easier to show you. Instead of that really long chain. Then I like to work in the back bumps. So when you turn the chain. You see here. The back bumps of the stitch. We make a linked half double crochet. So first chain two extra. One, two. Normally for a half double crochet you sh should yarn over and then insert in the stitch and make a half double crochet. For the linked half double crochet you insert your hook that, and that is only for the first stitch. You see here two chains. You insert your hook in the second chain in the back bump like this then yarn over pull up a loop this loop counts as your yarn over then insert so leave this loop on your hook insert in the next stitch in the back bump yarn over pull up a loop three loops on your hook and now finish like a normal half double crochet. So yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. You now see one, two, three loops here. Small, a little bit bigger, and the biggest. 
we insert our hook in the middle loop, under the middle loop. So, this one. Then, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook. This counts as your yarn over for your half double crochet. So we don't yarn over anymore. We have our yarn over here. Then insert in the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. And there you have your linked half double crochet. And here you see one, two, three loops. Insert your hook through the middle loop. So here you have the middle loop. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. So you have two loops on your hook. This is your yarn over. So insert straight in the next stitch without yarning over. Then yarn over, pull up a loop. Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. The middle loop, there we insert our, our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then insert in the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and finish like a normal half double crochet. And you see here is the loop. One, two, three. In the middle one, we insert our hook again. So insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert in the next stitch. And then finish your half double crochet. Insert in the middle loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert in the back bump of the next stitch. And finish your half double crochet. Middle loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. Don't forget to yarn over and pull up a loop. And then go to the next stitch. And finish your half double crochet. Then again, middle loop, pull up a loop. And in the next stitch, a half double crochet. Finish. I have two more stitches, so let's finish those two together. And you do this along the whole chain. And the last one, like this. So, this is your first row of linked half double crochet. Then chain one, chain two, so yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, chain two, and turn your work. In this chain two, you pick up your first loop for the linked half double crochet. You see here the bottom chain of the chain two, there you can insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then, you see here, your neck, the first stitch, so the front loop and the back loop, we insert in the back loop only, like this. Then yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. So this is your first linked half double crochet. And then, same thing, pick up the middle loop. Yarn over, pull through. And go to the next stitch. And we have a front loop and a back loop. And we insert in the back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Pick up the middle loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Go to the next stitch, front loop, back loop, 
insert in the back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Middle stitch or middle loop. Pull up a loop, then next stitch, front loop, back loop, insert in the back loop, pull up a loop, and finish your half double crochet. Pick up the middle loop of this stitch, yarn over, and then front loop, back loop, put your hook in the back loop, and finish your half double crochet. So repeat this for row two, middle loop, pull up a loop, back loop, and then finish your half double crochet. Middle loop, pull up a loop, front loop, back loop, insert in the back loop, and finish your half double crochet. So this is row two. You can pause the video and work up your row two. And when you are at the end, then meet me back. And then I'll show you how to move on. Okay, after row two, your work should look like this. And then we start row three. And it is a two row repeat. So we repeat rows two and three throughout the whole pattern. For row three, chain two, turn your work, that's the same in every row, and then insert your hook in the bottom loop of the chain two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and then instead of working only in the back loop, you insert on, through the whole stitch. So insert your hook through the whole stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through. All three loops on your hook. Insert through the middle loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then go to the next stitch, insert through the whole stitch. So that's the only difference between rows two and three is the way you insert in the next stitch. So for the even rows you insert in the back loop only, and for the uneven rows, you insert through the whole stitch, like this. And then the rest is all the same. So middle loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert through the whole stitch and finish your half double crochet. Middle loop, pull up a loop and through the next whole stitch and finish your half double crochet. So repeat rows two and three until you reach the length or the width you wrote down at number two. So for me that was 12 centimeters or about four and a half inches. So I work up a long piece, so a big long rectangle for the width, I wrote down at number two. So you do the same for the width you wrote down by at your number two. And then I'll meet you back. I work the stitch pattern until the width is the width I wrote down at number two. So for me, that is 24 centimeters or about nine and a half inches. And now it is time to decide our neckline. Let me show you how you do that. You need two stitch markers. You place the rectangle at your body. So like this over your shoulders and then to the other side and make sure the other side is lined up with the front. So put it over your shoulder so the front and the back are even at the bottom. Then decide where you want your neckline to start. So if you want a short V, then place your stitch marker here, a little bit up. If you want a low V, then place your stitch marker a little bit lower. 
do the same at the back. So for the back, I place my stitch marker pretty high because I don't want a big V at the back, but you can make a big V and deep V and front and the back. Then you place your stitch marker at the same point front and back. But I want a low V at the front and a little V at the back. So this stitch marker, you place it on the other side. So feel with your fingers, feel with your hand where you want your neckline to be. See in the mirror what you think that is nice. And then place your stitch marker. So you have one stitch marker in the front and one in the back. And then you see this is one half of the sweater and the other half. We make it like this. So another rectangle. Then the body of your sweater is, is already done. So place your two stitch markers and then you know where you make your neckline. And make sure you place the stitch marker at the side where your yarn is still attached. So you can work without binding off. So place the stitch markers and I'll meet you back when the stitch markers are in your work. Okay, I placed my two stitch markers. I have 52 stitches in between. So this will be my neckline. The next step is to crochet your row all the way until the last stitch before the stitch marker, before the first stitch marker. So I did that already. So pause the video and crochet the row until you reach the first stitch mark. And then chain the amount of chains that is in between the two stitch markers plus two. So also the two stitches with the stitch marker. You count them in as well. So for me that is 52 plus two. But maybe you have 60 in between or maybe you have 45 in between then chain 45 plus 2 or 60 plus 2. So count the amount of stitches you have in between the stitch markers and add 2. So I chain 54, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 53, 54. So we now have a chain that covers the neckline. And now we are attaching it to our work. So go to the next stitch marker, skip the stitch with the stitch marker and in the stitch next to the stitch marker. So after we make a stitch. So yarn over, hold the yarn over with your finger and then insert in the stitch after the stitch marker. And keep in mind if you worked in the back loop only in this in this part then you need to work in the back loop only as well for the rest of this row. So I pick up the back loop only and may maybe you need to pick up the whole loop then do that. Then yarn over, don't let go of the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop And yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. And then you can let go. So we now attached with a normal half double crochet. Now we start our, our linked half double crochet again. So find and yarn over, pull up a loop. Then insert in the next stitch, in the back loop only for me, and finish your half double crochet. Pick up the loop 
and work until the end of the row. So repeat this all the way to the end, then chain two, turn your work and work your way back until you reach this part again. So where your chain starts. So work the last half double crochet and then when you when your chain starts then I'll meet you back and show you how to work your chain. You can take out the stitch markers, we don't need them anymore. So work this way all the way to the end, chain two, turn your work and work your way back until you have the last half double crochet before your chain starts and then I'll show you how to move on. I worked my way back and I am at the chain now. To work the rest of the row you work in the back bumps of the chain. So this is the front of the chain, you can turn it to the other side and then work in the back bumps. Make one stitch in every chain. I have one more stitch before my chain starts. Finish that one and then insert, pull up a loop just like you did before and then turn your work, grab the back loop of the stitch and make a half double crochet. Pick up your loop, go to the next back bump it up and finish the half double crochet. Pick up your loop, grab the next stitch and in the back bump pull up a loop and finish your half double crochet. By making your stitches in the back bumps you have the stitches at the front so on both sides of the neckline your stitches will be the same. So I think that is nicer to see. But you can use the front if you like, that is totally fine. Then the back bump shows. But in the end we finish the neckline with some stitches as well so it doesn't really matter but I think it is easier to see the stitches when we finish the neckline. So make one linked half double crochet in every stitch across, in every chain, and when you reach your normal stitches again then just keep on working till the end of the row. When you're at the end of the row then chain two, turn your work and work your way back. Then repeat the stitch pattern until this part is exactly as wide as this part. You can count your rows to make sure this has just as much rows as this part. And when both sides are the same, then I'll meet you back. When your work looks like this, so you have a big rectangle and it has the measurements you wrote down, then it is time to form the body and start with the sleeves. So we fold our work like in this picture and you have to make sure that your outside is in. So the right side is in, wrong side is on the outside. And then you close the side with whip stitches you can make slip stitches or you can make single crochet stitches. When you fold your work in half, before you stitch it up you need to make the holes for the sleeves. We do that by placing stitch markers and you place a stitch marker 19 centimeter from the top. So you have an armhole of 19 centimeters. Then you put in your stitch marker. You can check if 19 centimeters is enough for you by measuring around your upper arm and see if 2 times 90 centimeters is enough because you make an 
arm wall of 19 centimeters, but you have a front and a back, so 38 centimeters or seven and a half inches. So 19 centimeters or seven and a half inches. If you want to check, measure around your arm and see if it is two times 19 centimeters, 38 centimeters, or two times seven and a half inches, 15 inches. Then you can check if the arm part is big enough for you. Then put in stitch markers. Make sure you have this, the same amount of stitches on the left and on the right, so you make two even sleeves. Then close the sides with whip stitches or slip stitches or single crochet, just like I mentioned. And then bind off and weave in. And then it's time to start with the sleeves. When you close the sides, it should look like this or something like this. This is my inside. I chose to make this my inside, but you can choose to make this your outside as well. You can use both sides, just pick the side you like most. So you see, my side is closed. I have an arm opening here. And here is my neckline. So repeat this on the other side and then I'll show you how to start with the sleeves. For the next step, we now made this part of the sweater. Now it's time to make the sleeves. For this part you measure from the top of your shoulder where your arm starts to four inches above your wrists. 10 centimeters above your wrist and write that down. For me that is 46 centimeters or about 18 inches. So I make a chain of 46 centimeters or 18 inches. That's the start for my sleeve. So make a long chain for the length you wrote down for the sleeve. And then work your stitch pattern back and forth, just like you did for the body. So make a big rectangle and you are done when the width of the rectangle is 38 centimeters or 15 inches. So that is the two times 19 centimeters or two times seven and a half inches. We left it open for the sleeves in the body. So start with a chain for the length you wrote down for the sleeve and then work up the amount of rows you need to cover two times the sleeve opening. So two times 19 centimeters or two times seven and a half inches. If this part is 38 centimeters or 15 inches, then I'll, I'll meet you back. Leave your yarn attached and then I'll meet you back and show you how to continue with the sleeve. So start this part. And when you have the width you need, then I'll meet you back. When you have the width you need, then we make a little extension at the bottom because we need 10 more centimeters or four inches more to cover the whole arm. So therefore we make a couple of rows in this way. So we worked in this direction and now we work a couple of rows in this direction. You can choose to make this in another color or you can choose to make it in, all in the same uh, color. So you have your yarn still attached, chain two, and then turn your work so you can work the side. And then you see here every row. So we work one stitch in every row. So we chain two, then pick up the loop from the first chain, just like you did before, like this, and then insert in the first row and try to pick up two loops. And then yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. Then pick up the loop, the middle loop, pull up a loop. So we worked this row, now we need to work the next row. So try to pick up two loops and finish your stitch. Now 
again pick up the loop pull through then we worked this row so we jump to the next row there insert your hook under two loops pull up a loop and pull through all three loops on your hook repeat this all the way across pick up a stitch to the next row work two loops and finish and you see it gets a little bit tighter here but that is exactly what we need because our sleeves go narrower to the bottom so repeat this all the way across and when you are at this point then chain two turn your work and then work your way back in the back loops only then chain two turn your work and work your way back through the whole stitch so just like you did for the whole pattern you are done with these rows if the work is one inch you can choose to make it even wider then make it two inches wide but you need to the bottom part oh, let me zoom out again so the bottom part will be 10 centimeters or four inches so when you make this part one inch then your cuff will be three inches wide when this part is two inches, then your cuff will be two inch wide. If this is three inches, then your cuff is one inch or two and a half centimeters. Or when this part is seven centimeters, then your cuff is three centimeters. So decide how wide you want your cuff. And then you know how many centimeters or inches you work up this part. You can make it the way you like it. I make two inches. That is what you can do as well. Or do as you like if you finish this part then don't bind off, bind off then we close the sleeve and attach it to the body so finish this sleeve i make it two inches wide five centimeters and if this is done don't cut your yarn leave it attached and make another sleeve exactly the same so you have two exactly the same panels then i'll meet you back and show you how to close the sleeves and attach them to the body i finished this piece and now it is time to close the sleeves and attach them to the sweater so make single crochet stitches or slip stitches or whip stitches along the side All the way to the other side and then attach this to the sweater so you have a sweater with sleeves and when you close the side keep in mind that you have the right side in so work your stitches on the outside so when you close your sleeve it looks like this and then we can attach it to the sweater therefore you cut your yarn so here I finished my seam I didn't cut my yarn yet and then leave a long tail so you can sew the sleeve into the sweater so leave a long tail cut your yarn And then you can bind off like this and then we place the sleeve flat so your seam is at the bottom and it is still inside out then we start sewing it to the body and I like to find the top stitch here when you hold it like this then there is a top stitch 
there put your stitch marker and then also in the top of the sleeve and then attach so this is the top and do the same at the bottom so through the bottom of the body and then through the bottom of the sleeve get a tapestry needle and then thread your needle with the tail end and then we just sewing the piece together and then through the stitch on this on the body you can use the stitches but on the sleeve you have to eyeball where to place your stitches so it doesn't stretch and it doesn't pull but lay nice and flat so keep going making your stitches all the way around pull your yarn every once in a while so you have a neat seam and then work your way all the way around until you are at the bottom again then bind off cut your yarn weave in your end and do exactly the same on the other side so close the sides and attach to the body and if you have done that then i'm at your back and show you how to finish with borders and cuffs all seams are closed the sleeve is attached to the body and now it is time to make the cuffs i already made one so you can see how it looks like when you are done So I chose to make mine a little bit shorter, but you can choose to make this two inches and then this two inches as well. That's totally up to you. Just fit your sweater, put it on and see how much length you need at the end to finish your sleeve. So let's go to the other side. Here I don't have a cuff yet. Turn your sweater right side out, so the right side is on the outside, and then we start our ribbing. Okay, to start, make a slip knot. And insert your hook in the first stitch near the seam. And this is my first stitch. So insert your hook, grab your slip knot, pull through, and chain one to secure. Now we chain eight stitches. So with the chain one, you have nine in total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, eight and the one in the beginning that makes nine we now make slip stitches in every stitch across so we skip the first stitch the loop on our hook doesn't count as a stitch so we skip the first stitch and then insert and I use the back bump insert your hook in the second chain from the hook then yarn over pull through and pull through the loop on your hook try to make the loops loose my struggle is that I always make my slip stitches too tight I need to keep that in mind that I stay loose but whew, I find it difficult so insert in the next yarn over pull up a loop and pull the loop through the loop on your hook in the next stitch also a slip stitch 
and pull through. So work your way across, making slip stitches in every stitch until you finished your whole chain. And then you have a total of eight stitches. Last one, insert, pull up a loop and pull through the loop on your hook. So we now have eight stitches and now it's time to attach it to the sleeve. So this is your last stitch and here is the stitch where we attached our yarn. So insert in that same stitch and make a slip stitch. Then go to the next stitch on your sleeve and make another slip stitch. Then turn your work. And now you see here, let me show you, two stitches. The first two stitches are the slip stitches where we attach to our sleeve. So we skip those two and then we insert in the back loop of the first stitch of the eight that are next. So keep your yarn on the back. So when you insert in the back loop, so you have a front loop and a back loop and we insert in the back loop only. Insert and then yarn over and pull through. Then go to the next stitch, insert in the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop and pull through the loop on your hook and make a slip stitch in the back loop in every stitch across. So you have eight slip stitches again. And this yarn is really beautiful to look at. It has a nice sheen, but it splits very easily. That is a bit difficult sometimes. When you are at the end of the eight slip stitches, then chain one and turn your work again. And now just the same, you skip the chain one, insert in the back loop of the first slip stitch and make a slip stitch and then we make eight slip stitches all the way across using the back loops only and I help the loop with my nail sometimes that's also necessary because I make my loops too tight. <laughs> so inserting is a bit difficult sometimes. So try to make your slip stitches loose and then you don't have this problem. The last of the eight And then this is the sleeve and you see here the last stitch we worked in. So we make another slip stitch in the same stitch of the sleeve and then make a slip stitch in the next stitch to move up. And then you see you have this. Then turn your work again. Make sure your yarn is on, oh, on this side. 
and then skip the two slip stitches in the beginning because they are only there to attach your ribbing to the to the sleeve so skip those two and then make eight slip stitches in the back loops only chain one turn your work and make eight slip stitches in the back loops only back and when you have done that then you make a slip stitch in the same stitch and a slip stitch in the next stitch work your way all the way around and when you are at the last stitch of your sleeve then I'll meet you back and show you how to close this part so keep working and I'll meet you back at the end when you worked your way around then it's time to close the gap therefore you fold your work right side in so right sides on top of each other and then we can close the eight stitches of the side you can do that by making slip stitches so insert in the first stitch on this side and then inserting in the first stitch on the other side and then make a slip stitch or you can make single crochet stitches that is also an option you can choose you can also sew it together so attach the eight stitches together and then bind off cut your yarn and weave in your end and do the same on the other side when you have two sides done then I'll meet you back and show you how to work the neckline when you finished both sleeves you weave in your ends then it is time to create a ribbing in the neckline we do that exactly the same as you did for the sleeves but now we start with six chains instead of nine insert your hook exactly in the middle of the back or the front that is just where you want to start that is no problem you can use the front first or the back first okay so exactly in the middle of the front you see the side of the stitches pick up two loops insert your hook so exactly in the middle then make a slip knot grab it and pull through and then pull. chain one to secure and then we chain five more one two three four and five in the back loops we make slip stitches you can use the front as well but that is exactly the same as on the sleeves so slip stitches make sure you make them loose learn from my mistakes I'm the queen of tight stitches oh man <laughs> I struggle with slip stitches always I don't know it's not my stitch but yeah sometimes you have to use it <laughs> so I'll do my best to make them loose okay five so we have five slip stitches then insert in the same stitch as where you attached your yarn and make a slip stitch then go go to the first stitch of the side so you see the stitches of the neckline and one side here and here is the first stitch so go to that stitch insert on the both loops and you can weave in your end in the same time or you can leave it out and weave it in later that is just what you prefer so make a slip stitch in that stitch again turn your work and then you see here the two slip stitches we used to attach it to the neckline and then we work in the third slip stitch so we skip the first two and start working in the third so make your, sure your yarn is on the front so one two and in the third 
insert in the back loop only. And again, <laughs> I worked too tight. Oh my goodness, come on. Yes. Back loop only and make a slip stitch. Then work a slip stitch in every back loop across. So you have five in total. And work loose. And this is number five. And then chain one, turn your work. We skip the chain one, that does count as a stitch, and then we work five slip stitches in the back loops across. And number five, and then a slip stitch in the same stitch as where you start your row and slip stitch in the next stitch. Then turn your work and work your way back, working always the back loops. So keep working all the way along this side of the neckline until you reach the middle of the back or the front. This is my front, so when I am at the middle of the front, then I'll cut my yarn bind up and leave a 4 inch or 10 centimeter tail to sew them together in the end. And then turn your work, attach again in the middle and then work the other side exactly the same as you did for this side. When you are at the end. Cut your yarn, bind off, leave a 10 cm or 4 inch tail, and then I'll meet you back and show you how to sew them together. I finished the two sides of the neckline, and now it is time to, to attach the two ends. I already did that on the other side, so I can show you how it looks. So you see it is a little V. So we do the same on the other side. So close this by whip stitching the two sides together or make slip stitches on the inside stitching the two together. When you've done that, then it is time to start at the bottom. Put your Sweater on, put it on and see if you like the length, if you think. And there will be about one inch at the bottom extra when you make your ribbing. But if you think including the one inch your sweater is too short and you can extend it by making the same. horizontal lines as you did for the sleeves so for the bottom you have exactly the same so it looks like this as well and you can make that horizontal bar as wide as you like so put it on see how your sweater fits and if you like the length if you want it longer then you can make this detail also at the bottom. Therefore you attach your yarn in the corner, so at your seam, so here's my seam, and then you attach your yarn, chain two, and start your linked half double crochets and make one linked half double crochet in every row, just like you did for the sleeves. And then work your way around, close your round chain to turn your work, don't forget to turn your work, and work your way back. 
keep doing that like you did for the sleeve until you reach the length you like and then we need to make the bottom part if you don't want this part so you think your sweater is nice as it, as it is then you skip this part and jump right to the part where I show you how to make the border if you are done making the horizontal rows then it is time to start the ribbing at the bottom for this ribbing you start with a chain 11 and then you have 10 slip stitches for your ribbing so you make the ribbing exactly the same as you did on the neckline and on the sleeves but this time you start with 11 chains and then it looks like this if you don't want to make the horizontal rows then you can skip that part and start right away with your ribbing then also it is 11 chains and then work 10 slip stitches on top maybe you want your ribbing a bit bigger or shorter you can adjust by making more or less chains so make it exactly as you want so if you want to make the horizontal rows do so before you start the ribbing if you don't want that then skip it like i did and jump right into the ribbing at the bottom i started with 11 chains and make 10 slip stitches on top and work my way around when you are done then i'll meet you back and show you how to close and then you're all done my ribbing is done i chose to make my ribbing directly at the bottom of my sweater and not making the horizontal stripes in between but that is totally up to you just pick what you like most and do that so I work my way around and I have an opening here at the end so we need to close this opening and then the sweater is done you turn your sweater outside in so this is the inside of your sweating sweater facing you then grab your hook and pick up your loop and then we slip stitch the two parts together so insert in the first stitch and insert in the first stitch on the other side like this and then yarn over pull through and make a slip stitch then pick up the next stitch and the next stitch on the other side and make a slip stitch like this and then your work is closed you can also whip stitch those two sides together or you can make single crochet just use the method you prefer to attach both sides together and then bind off and weave in your end and then your sweater is done if you like this tutorial give me a thumbs up and if you want to see more of my videos then subscribe to my channel if you have a question or a suggestion, let me know in the comments down below. If you made your own Sarah sweater, let me know. I would love to see your result. You can show me the result on Instagram. So, hope to see you next time. Bye.